All right then, I'm sure this is the video you've all been waiting for, isn't it? It's the rear end. I know you've been waiting for this because I've been waiting for this forever and I've never seen a video for it. So I made you one. Now I got the uh, upright here on, but it's not part of the video. It just looks cool all together. I will do another video on this, but right now we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and go ahead and go ahead focus on this guy oh man give me a minute that lighting's terrible all right we're just gonna have to deal with it all right before you had zero videos and now you have one with weird lighting that guy so here we've got this is just a mild steel piece of tube that I have machined down like so oh oh there it is Machine down to take a bearing. There's a bearing here and a bearing here, and then it all rides on a um, spline shaft here through the center. Now this black thing here is uh, it is an internally splined uh, coupler or something, and then it's welded to my carriers here and here, which are half-inch steel plate that I have machined down to take a sprocket and my CV. Other side, you've got the brake rotor CV. Pretty simple. And then here on the bottom, you can see this plate. This will be welded into the chassis. And let me lose the lighting because I can't see anything. You can see there's a tab welded to the plate and then a tab welded to the carrier itself. So what that'll do is allow it all to pivot on that pin right there, that half inch bolt. And what that's going to do is give us our chain tension forward and backwards, right? So you pull it back, you tighten that, that nut up, and then you've got your chain tension here. Now <clears throat> obviously that's not that's not all that's going to do it. Up here there will be another tab, which this guy, this turnbuckle, I think it's called, is mounted to. And then the back side will be mounted to the chassis itself. So you've got three points of contact holding this thing together, holding it back, holding your tension. One, two, three. Now, I was kind of worried about if that's going to work out, but this is what I've seen the uh, the European guys running on their cross carts and it's working just fine so I think it'll be alright. And these 600 engines only have what 50 or 60 foot pounds of torque. I mean that's not really a monster. That's like half of a Miata so it'll be alright. Even even a thousand cc has what 70 to 80 foot pounds of torque. We're still not even in Miata territory yet so she's gonna work fine. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I'm gonna take this whole thing apart for you though now so you can really see what's going on here. I'm sure you get the picture, but you know, I want to be thorough because if you're like me, you have no clue what's going on and you need a clue. So get a clue. bye we are back here's all the various parts for the rear end um, super simple I mean look you got one two three main parts you didn't have to build this you just got to do this stuff easy so let's start with this guy you can see now you've got your chain tension right there um, it's pretty nice too because I can set it to where this is forward when I put the chain on and then when I rotate it back to here that should be enough to get my chain tensioned. Um, what do we just go at least an inch and a half, two inches back? That That's way more than enough. So then you won't lose your axle height because it'll be in the same 
plane. If I had to pull it all the way back here, now my axles are really low. But anyway, moving on, we've got our carrier plates for the sprocket. That slips over like that. Seats in and bolts down. And then this ring here is for the this uh, shoulder on the CV axle. And then flip it over. Sorry for all the slamming. I know it's going to get annoying. You have that uh, shoulder collar machined into the back of this guy and then that will be welded together so it's all one piece like this guy. I didn't want to do it yet because I wanted to show what was going on here. Um, so I've got that. This is the rotor side. It's pretty simple. All it was was the center for the axle and then that back for the collar. Now I, my bolt holes for the rotor are cut through, but that's okay. It's going to work out. For the next ones, I'll just go a little wider here. And then we've got our splined axle shaft, which sits right down in these spline collars. And that is all bolted together with this guy. I'm not, I don't remember what this is called, but it's got that flat head on it, remember? Um, so when I get that thing tightened all the way down, it's nice and flush, and it's not gonna wanna punch through the back of that axle. So you can't run a bolt in there. And then, last but not least, the shaft here slides right through these bearings with a little bit of force. Uh, it's a slip fit. It's not a press fit. I was worried about that Because for one, I mean the bearing is riding on splines So it's already got half the surface area to work with for two This slip fit I didn't want This axle this axle shaft here spinning faster than that inner race and having it slip there and mess up my bearings, but I got this here uh, the splined axle and the collars from Protodie and I've been talking to the owner over there and this is how they've run it for 15 years now with you know serious horsepower off-road buggies that are just taking a beating and uh, you know it's all holding up just fine so I'm gonna go ahead and take the pros advice and do it that way the only thing I'm gonna do different here is I'm gonna run two bearings in each side because that's what Jody does, that's what I'm gonna do, the uh, owner at Protodye. I've got one bearing in each side and these are really good, high quality um, electric motor bearings, you know, so they're meant for some really high speeds, but I'm gonna run the two. Next time, you should also run the two. Um, and these are three inch outside diameter the ones that they use are two and a half inch outside diameter, so you'll have less mass to deal with too, so less weight, and that's always good. Now, if you have machine tools or access to machine tools, you work in a machine shop, sure, go ahead and build these. Super simple, like, uh, well this took me like probably two, two and a half weeks to finish, but I was also doing all the planning and everything in that time. So now, now that they're done, I could probably crank it out in a week or less, maybe three, four days. But still, that's too long, and I'm not a machinist, so for customer builds, I will be sending all this stuff over to a machine shop I found here locally, and uh, really good guys over there. They're gonna make all these parts for me, I, you know, I'm not a machine guy. I want everything to be perfect. For me, this is fine. But if I'm selling this stuff, like, it's got to be spot on. So I'll see how all this works, though, in my proto buggy. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Anyways, I'm going to put all this stuff back together now. So you can watch that if you like in the same fashion, that, that time lapse type of deal. And if not, thanks for watching.